Jesus H. Christ, this is absurd. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. Let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, it is a fantastic time to be an American living in America. When historians look back on the historic history of our historically racist nation, they're going to be studying key terroristic, fat phobic, and draconian moments that led us to who we are as a hateful society. Things like the racist ramblings of Abraham Lincoln as he read the Emancipation Proclamation. We'll never forget the bigoted remarks that Franklin Delano Roosevelt made against the Japs after Pearl Harbor. And we can write off about 99% of the things that Donald Trump has said since the day he was hatched. But now we can add one more to the list. One glorious moment in history when Joe Biden, the former vice president and massive pedophile, went on national television to warn Americans about the upcoming dangers for the soul of God's democratic America. Donald Trump and the MAGA Republicans represent an extremism that threatens the very foundations of our republic. Yes, sir, Bob. Those evil MAGA extremist Republicans who are so extremism that they're semi-fascist. You know, it's kind of funny, because back in the day, you used to be able to go to a doctor to get a little blue pill to help you with your semi-fascist dong. But now those days are long gone, because women still refuse to talk to me. And if there's anyone to blame here, it's those stupid, evil, poopy, MAGA, semi-fascist extremism Republicans. You know who I'm talking about. Those losers who virtually have no majority power in Congress and absolutely no authority on the executive level, those assholes are responsible for everything that's ever went wrong in the history of humans. They're causing endless amounts of violence in the streets, endorsing the intimidation of juries and judges, systematically stripping the rights away from journalists and law-abiding citizens, and just being all-around jerk-offs in general. Now, it's not very nice to name names because snitches get stitches and all that, but I think we should err on the side of caution on this one and just make sure that we're being as specific as possible when it comes to naming all of these folks as extremists. I mean, we don't want to be naming 74 million people as enemies of the state, so, uh, Joe, what exactly are we talking about here? Okay, so in December, you will... You know what I mean. <laughs> oh, yeah, I know what you're talking about. Wait, what? It's pretty awesome that Joe Biden went out to do this speech in front of a blood-red background with soldiers standing at the ready. <laughs> Makes him look tough and cool. At least the audience apparently thought so. Just listen to the canned applause from that front row of 20 people. <clears throat> That got edited in so hard that the back row didn't even need to bother to participate. But I guess a bunch of extremism assholes decided not to read the memo and showed up to Independence Hall to protest within earshot of the former vice president's historic speech. In our character, optimism that is tested yet endures, courage that digs deep when we need it. Empathy that fuels democracy. But I gotta hand it to the former vice president, though. He handled that potential insurrection with the grace and dignity that only an octogenarian can muster. Look, our democracy is imperfect. It always has been. Notwithstanding those folks you hear on the other side there, they're entitled to be outrageous. This is a democracy. But history and common sense... Good manners is nothing they've ever suffered from. Joey, baby, you hit the nail on the head. Those butt-hurt MAGA assholes can't understand that they lost the election two years ago. They need to come to terms with the fact that the white Democrats won their election fair and square. And if the white Democrats lose in the midterms, it's because those extremism MAGA Republicans rigged the election so the white Democrats would lose. And that makes perfect sense if you're willing to inject three quarts of moonshine directly into your eyeballs. And even if the Democrats worked with corporate America and big tech to fortify the election, that's their right to do so. There's nothing wrong with suppressing the flow of information to prevent damning news stories to keep voters from making informed decisions. That's just the kind of stuff you gotta do when you wanna keep your democracy safe and protected from a bunch of extremisms who wanna keep their country safe, independent, and secure. It's really not that big of a deal. I did the same thing back in the third grade. Thanks to my election fortification skills, Tammy McNeely, a hardcore communist, won the student council presidency while her opponent, Toby Crenshaw, got sent to juvie due to insider trading charges. And as a trophy for my good deeds, Tammy destroyed my permanent record and rewarded me with this film strip that I've cherished for the last 30 years. Let's check it out together. The following message is brought to you by the Republican Economic Coalition for Teenagers United in Municipality. What is up, fellow gangsters and children? 
Are you hip to the new drinking game that is sweeping the nation? I am telling you, brother, it is the neatest thing to hit the neighborhood since the Run DMCs. It's called the Democracy Drinking Game. You can play it anywhere, at your local beach party, at the malt shop, or trying to burn down your city in the name of liberal rage. It's so simple, not even you will be able to believe it. Whenever you hear a politician, press secretary, propaganda monger, or sexy ass bitch ho use the word democracy, take a nice long sip of ice cool water. All of the righteous dudes are playing this game, cool broskies like the world famous blogman Derek O'Shea who says that being responsibly hydrated is totally redonkulous. Don't be like this flunky funky here who thinks that being hydrated is for the nazis. So not only are you going to be keen on your current events, but you can do so as a responsible adult, fully hydrated and on the toilet. Be like your bodacious elected officials like Marco Rubio, Donald Trump, and even that god-awful unforgivable cunt Nancy Pelosi and drink your daily allotted ration of water. For democracy. And when you really think about it, supporting an open war declaration against 74 million Americans just makes perfect sense. We are the United Snakes of America, the key word being united. We need to join together, shoulder to shoulder and heart to heart, together in a common cause of hating 74 million Americans. So let's all just sit back, relax, and let Uncle Grandpa Joey take the wheel and unveil his master plan. If you want to fight against the country, you need an F-15. You need a something a little more than a gun. No, I'm not joking. And there you go. Joe Biden simply wants to drop bombs on 74 million Americans simply because they have a difference of political opinion. And if you ask me, that's a gift that keeps on giving. Wait, what? What is up, Mahones? Arston the Unclean here. Thank you 20 times over for checking out the new video. If you think Joe Biden's handlers are off their fucking rockers and are forcing the country into dangerous territory, then welcome aboard. Hit that like and subscribe button should the mood suit you, and that comment section is always welcoming to the wayward rants of folks. Today's subject is budget air freshener. I want to give a personal thank you to both the podcaster Derek O'Shea and the legend himself funky here for the inspiration for today's video these magnificent bastards are fantastic sons of bitches and deserve your support so check them out and you just might learn something and as always thank you for caring and i'll see you in the gulag